Hey guys, this is Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're going to talk about Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. This book jumped to my number one favorite. I think anybody could read this and enjoy it. I feel bad for people who haven't read this book. The dialogue was phenomenal. I've never read such beautiful dialogue in any book ever. And I was reading this at home and I said, I can't read it in public because I keep either squealing from laughter, squealing from awkwardness, or from sadness. I mean, all my emotions were just like, I couldn't control anything. I was so entrapped into the story. Like, it was already my favorite. Nine pages in. Do you know how big of a thing that is? That's huge. And so I want to give you guys a summary that is not the synopsis on the back because I feel like the synopsis on the back totally leads you down one road and then you realize that that's not what the book really is. It's such a vague synopsis, which is good, but I feel like I want to try to give you guys a non-spoiler summary for this that isn't exactly what the back of the book says it is. Abby Abernathy and her friend America Mason go to school at Eastern and America's boyfriend Shipley, and then he has his cousin Travis Maddox. He is a walking one-night stand, tattoos, and but he's smart. And we start to grow and understand him as a character, and then we see the change in him. And it's great to really see his growth. Him and Abby get to have this amazing friendship, and at first Abby was just so reluctant to have anything to do with him and she didn't want a relationship with this guy and she didn't want to just be another one night stand. So their friendship grows and it's so witty, the conversation, and he has this nickname for her the first second that he met her. He calls her Pigeon and we figure out what the name means and it's beautiful. <laughs> the water heater in American Pigeon's dormitory is like out. So what they do is they go and stay with Shipley and Travis. And Pigeon's really like, uh, about it at first. But then what happens is eventually the water, it gets fixed. But the thing is, she makes a bet with Travis and she ends up losing that bet. And she has to stay in his apartment with him and Shipley. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Abby is the only person that can put Travis in his place. And everyone just, they grew as characters, they grew together, and it was so beautiful. So yeah, that's about as much of a non-spoiler section as I can give you guys because so much happens throughout this book and it's so, it doesn't look big, but I feel like I read an 800 page book because of how everything went. With the time period in which their friendship took place was realistic and I felt like they knew each other and it made everything feel so built. I cannot thank you guys enough because you recommended this to me and kept nagging me about it and that's what I need. I do need people to be like, hey, hey, have, have you read that yet? There aren't really words. It's just jamming of the keyboard to me. Just, uh, 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 it's that good. It's so witty and so sarcastic and funny and amazing and depressing and it's just everything wrapped into one. Pick it up now. I'll see you guys later when you have read it because I'm going to start talking spoilers. So bye for now. Holy mother of God. I was so confused at first. He calls her Pigeon. What's a Pigeon? Pigeon is ever- I cannot even say the word Pigeon anymore, you guys, without you just my heart. Within a mere eight pages, like I said, I succumbed to Travis's charm. He's just like, I'm not gonna bag you. She's like, how do you ever get laid talking like that? Just, I was like, that is when I realized in the dialogue, I'm just going to be destroyed by- I won't take no for an answer with just- just read the, I, I'm not going to quote things from this because I swear I would be here for over an hour quoting you my favorite things from this book. So you know what? I'm gonna give you guys a thing down there for this Tumblr that I use to quote things off like hella crazy. There are not words for Travis Maddox. He watches out for Abby and he stands up for Abby. He won't let her wear low-cut things out unless he's with her to protect her. And he knows the stupidest things about her. He knows her favorite cereal. He knows how he, she puts chocolate syrup in her oatmeal and gets her a soda for her without her having to ask. And, and he beat Crystal Pulp because he made fun of her. Travis fucking Maddox and there aren't words for him. So when Travis brought those girls home and had sex with them on his couch, and when he came to bed, Abby, yeah, she was really pissed about that, but the thing is, what she actually said was, I don't want you driving on your bike drunk. And Parker, I was like, okay, you need to keep up your sweet act or you need to turn into a raging asshole because one of those two things will push her away because I thought she's just going to be like, you're just so sweet and that's what I thought I would want because I'm supposed to be this good girl and be away from my past, 
But no, because Travis is there and he's like, break up with him. And she calls him and she's like, I think I'm in love with Travis Maddox. And after her birthday party when she was so drunk and she woke up and they were both sleeping on his bathroom floor and he <laughs> had this whole dialogue piece where he said that she was still managed to be beautiful when he, she was throwing up and he held her hair back and he's like, that's something special. That's swoon worthy, you guys, if you haven't figured out by now. Someone taking care of you when you're drunk? I'm sorry, it's the sweetest thing ever. When Travis finally was like, I'm going to talk to you, I'm gonna, tonight, we're talking about this. And I'm like, thank you, Travis, because I don't think I could have taken a couple more chapters of you guys thinking the same thing and not saying it and both of you being miserable. I was miserable. So after they had sex and then she left and she's like, I was keeping my promise. He won't miss me this time tomorrow. He's... It is different with you, Abby. He doesn't let any girl sleep in his bed. He never has sex in his bed. Why can't they understand this? I was... Well, how could they have both been so blind? But then I understand completely and it wasn't even annoying that they were so blind because think about it. Have you ever had that friend that you were such good friends with that you could never be in a relationship with them so you just totally push the idea away but then you don't want to make that move because you don't want it to mess up or not be or whatever so it's so realistic in that sense so he gives this beautiful I love you speech and then she's hey she and he's like you love me and she's like oh it's the tattoos you know just I could not convey my emotions at that moment oh my god I was just everything all at once I was everything all at once all the time all the time Chris never learns. It's like he wants his face to be permanently rearranged. Poker night was so funny. And Tyler is hilarious. He got a sofa because what she said before about I will never sleep on that thing. I won't even sit in it because that's where he screws all of his girls. And he knew that. He got a new couch. His tattoo pigeon. <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking sweet. I know I'm a little bit of a hypocrite for that because I just bashed another book for that, but it's her nickname, and they're different, and I don't know why this book changed my mind about it. Then, then, not just Pigeon, but something else. I belong to my beloved and my beloved is mine. And just, uh, I can't know. Bye. So when her dad came, I was like, it's such an obvious choice just to go to Vegas. And then that whole time when they were in the office at Benny's and then Travis is in there and I'm like, oh my god, I was so anxiety ridden, I couldn't. He's not gonna let anything happen to Pigeon and so he's gonna end up getting hurt and this is gonna be so fucking awful. I was so mad at Travis. I'm like, how can you even consider that deal with Benny? She's right. And even if she wasn't, you should respect that that was her past. She left it for a reason. And for you to just say, no, this is what I'm gonna do, I understand his intentions were completely amiable because he wanted to do it to take care of her. It wasn't the greed aspect, which is what she thought it was. Because she didn't want to be picked over greed and money like her father chose over her. And she didn't want that with Travis. So she broke it off with him and that whole thing was miserable. And then he's like, I need you. I miss my best friend. I don't know how she was able to keep it together because I was falling apart. He wants the best for you. And it's not the money. I don't know how I, how she didn't see that. It was for a house for them. And he knew so early on that he would marry her. Oh my god. I was like, how could you don't him when he just said that he still loved you? Don't don't him. And she was at Travis's for Thanksgiving. And then Jim said how Travis never tried to love anyone after his mom. And then he said how the way that Travis looks at her is something special. Oh, and then he said that she's the only woman he's ever loved other than his mother. And I quote, I don't know what it'll do to him if you leave him too. And she just, ah! Why did Travis have to open his mouth at the Thanksgiving thing? She was going to get back together with him and miserable. Oh my God. And he doesn't contact her after that. And he's pretending happiness and fooling everybody besides America. And then he's like, I trashed my phone so I wouldn't call you a million times every day. Like, you broke my fucking heart. We just keep getting teased. It's like, they're bad to get back together? Just kidding. No, they're bad to just kidding. I just, I just, <laughs> I went from sad tears to happy tears to sad tears so many times when he had that toast. And he's like, to all the douchebags and all the girls that he fell in love because he was the best friend. <laughs> and his room, when she came back, he had pictures of him, her, and Toto, and places that they've gone together, and it was like this whole memorabilia wall for Abby. When Ethan groped her, I mean, if the cops didn't come, I was a little nervous to see how far Travis would go. Abby said, 
I don't belong to you. And then he screamed, I belong to you. He made her promise that she wouldn't leave in the morning. And she's like, I'll love you forever. You guys know me well enough now to know that I cry in books a lot. But holy crap, I can't even think about this book without finding tears. I had a really bad feeling about that eight month sit us up fight thing. I had no idea there would be a fire. I kind of thought maybe the cops or something, but not a fire. Oh my god, that surge of relief when they found each other. And then it was like Trent. Tr no, because then Jim, near-death experiences really get you thinking, I guess. When she proposed, and he already had the ring. Yeah, and he got it such a long time ago. And I'm like, he's always known. Travis has always known. They got married, and then she got the tattoo of Mrs. Maddox. And he was bringing out more than her. And then the story ended with the line, Want to bet? dialogue in this book and I can't get out of my mind the things that Travis would say and it's not necessarily that they were sweet things just things that he would say and they were meant to make her feel guilty they are so perfect for each other in their own fucked up ways and he's not her past and he only wants more for her and she's changed him to this guy I've found tears a lot of times in this video and succumbed to them a couple of them and that's probably what you can see but, oh my gosh, when you think about it and the story and the way that you speculated things would happen, you couldn't stop reading because it would just be in your head and you're just, I can't do anything until I know. I was so emotionally invested in all of these characters and I cared so, so much about them. I don't think I've ever cared for characters more in a book. And I've read a lot. I'm so excited for The Walking Disaster. I want to see it from Travis's perspective. I want to know when it was that he got the ring. I want to know all these... Oh, I'm so excited to be in Travis's head. So let me know down there in the comments what you think of Beautiful Disaster. I was a little bit sad at first that it was a companion book and not a sequel, but I'm okay with it now that i finished the book. I still wish for an actual sequel, though. Oh, and I heard talk... It might be a movie. I want to hear who you would like as the cast or who you don't like as the cast. Like, let's just talk all about that down there because I will talk for days about this book. I'll see you guys later. Bye.